online. I'm Lady Tubla and I'll be your moderator for the day. Before we start, I'd like to announce that this will be streamed live through PSA's Facebook page and tweeted as well using hashtag inflation. With us today are Music Claire Dennis S. Mapa, National Statistician and Civil Registrar General. De Deputy National Statistician, Rosalinda Bautista of the <coughs> Sectoral Statistics Office. Assistant National Statisticians, Grace Del Prado and Wilma Guillem. And Chief Elena Barona. To offer the briefing, let us all welcome Music Claire Dennis Mapa. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, the Philippine Statistics Authority is pleased to report the inflation rate of the Philippines for the month of August 2019. The Philippines' headline inflation rate decelerated further to 1.7% in August 2019. This is the lowest since October 2016, in which the inflation rate was 1.8%. This brings the year-to-date inflation for 2019 to 3.0%. Inflation in July 2019 was higher at 2.4% and in August 2018, 6.4%. Among the 11 major commodity groups, the top contributor to the overall inflation was restaurant and miscellaneous goods and services which recorded an annual rate of 3.2%. <coughs> the share of this commodity group to the overall inflation was 24.5%. Specifically, the items that primarily contributed to the August 2018 inflation rate of, those, of this commodity group were the following. Meals eaten outside the home at 3.4% inflation. Personal care at 2.9% inflation. And personal effects, 2.3% inflation. The second commodity group that largely contributed to the overall inflation was housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels, which posted 1.8% inflation and a share of 24.1% to the overall inflation. Major contributors to the August 2019 inflation of housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels were actual rental for housing at 3.5% inflation, fuel wood 6.2% inflation, and water distribution services at 4.1% inflation. The third major contributor to the overall inflation was food and non-alcoholic beverages, which had a 0.6% inflation and a 14% share to the overall inflation in August. Specific items that contributed to the August 2019 inflation of this commodity group were fish at 2.8% inflation, meat at 2.5% inflation, other cereals, flour, cereal preparation, bread, pasta, and other bakery products with 3.2% inflation. The slowdown of inflation in August 2019 was mainly due to the slower annual increase in the index of the heavily weighted food and non-alcoholic beverages at 0.6%. Moreover, the following commodity groups posted slower annual rates during the month. These are housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels, 1.8%, health, 3.1%, recreation and culture, 1.8%. Also, restaurant and miscellaneous goods and services posted a lower 
rate at 3.2%. The transport index, which dropped at 0.2%, also contributed to the downtrend of inflation this month. On the other hand, higher annual increases were noted in the indices of alcoholic beverages and tobacco at 10.1%, clothing and footwear at 2.8%, and education at 4.6%. Meanwhile, the indices of furnishing, household equipment, and routine maintenance of the house and communication retained their annual rates in July 2019 at 2.9% and 0.3% respectively. A downtrend of inflation in August 2019 was seen in recreation and culture, primarily games of chance, which recorded an annual rate of 0.1% in August 2019 from 16.6% in July 2019. The slowdown of the August 2019 inflation but was also brought about by food and non-alcoholic beverages, particularly the food groups that contributed to the slower inflation in, June, uh, in August 2019. And these are the items. Rice, negative 5.2% from negative 2.9%. Corn, negative 3.7% from negative 3.0%. Meat, 2.5% from 3.5%. Fish, 2.8% from 3.8%. Vegetables, negative 1.4% from 3.4%. And sugar, jam, honey, chocolate, and confectionery at negative 2.9% from negative 1.4%. Transport also contributed to the downtrend of the August 2019 inflation. The items that primarily contributed to the slower inflation in August 2019 were the following. Petroleum and fuels or personal transport equipment negative 5.2% from negative 2.8%. Jeepney fare, 1.5% from 2.1%. Bus fare, 4.3% from 4.4%. Taxi fare, 0% from 27%. And tricycle fare, 2.3% from 2.6%. Similarly, inflation in the national capital region continued to move at a slower pace of, uh, during the month of August at 1.4%. Its annual rate was higher at 2.3% in July 2019 and 7.0% in August 2018. Following the same trend as in the national level and in the national capital region, Inflation in areas outside the national capital region eased further to 1.8% in August 2019. Inflation in July 2019 was recorded at 2.4% and in August 2018 at 6.2%. The highest annual rate among the regions in areas outside the national capital region remain in Mimaropa region at 4.6% in August 2019. This was lower than its annual rate in July 2019 at 4.9%. The lowest inflation among the regions in areas outside the national capital region was recorded in Region 9, Sambuanga Peninsula at 0.5%. In July 2019, its annual increment was higher at 1.4%. Among the 11 major commodity groups, the top contributors to the overall inflation of Bimaropa region were the following. 
housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels, 7.6% inflation, and a 30.5% share. Food and non-alcoholic beverages, 1.5% inflation, and 15.2% share. Restaurant and miscellaneous goods and services, at 7.5% inflation and 14.4% share. Alcoholic beverages and tobacco at 28.2% inflation and 12.3% share. And finally, transport with 6.0% inflation and a 10.9% share. Relative to their annual rates in July 2019, lower annual increments were noted in all the regions in areas outside the National Capital Region in August 2019. The monthly increment of the Seasonally Adjusted Consumer Price Index for all items at the national level slowed down to 0.1% in August 2019 from 0.2% in July 2019. The index for food and non-alcoholic beverages dropped by 0.1% from zero growth in July 2019. Moreover, monthly increases in the indices of health accelerated to 0.2% from 0.4%. And education from uh, to 0.8% from 2.0%. In addition, the index of recreation and culture registered a zero growth in August 2019 from 0.1% in July 2019. The alcoholic beverages and tobacco index picked up by 1.9% monthly growth in August 2019 from 0.7% in July 2019. The same July 2019 monthly rates were noted in the following commodity groups. Clothing and footwear at 0.4%, housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels, negative 0.1%. Furnishing household equipment, and routine maintenance of the house and restaurant and uh, miscellaneous goods and services, both at 0.3%. This ends my presentation on the inflation in the Philippines for August 2019. The Philippine Statistics Authority appreciates your presence in the August 2019 inflation press briefing. We look forward to meeting you again on October 4, 2019 when we report the inflation rate for September 2019. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we now continue on to the employment statistics. <laughs> okay, uh, we proceed to the preliminary results of the July 2019 labor force survey. <coughs> Employment rate in July 2019 was placed at 94.6%. The same rate as in the same period a year ago. So this rate translates to 42.95 million workers in July 2019 and 40.65 million in July 2018. The uh, growth rate in terms of employment, the employed person posted a year-on-year -year growth of 5.7% in July 2019, or about 2.3 million additional workers. 
Unemployment rate was placed at 5.4% in July 2019, the same rate as in July 2018. However, the number of unemployed persons increased by 4.4%, placing the count to 2.43 million in July 2019 from 2.33 million in July 2018. This is due to the increase in the labor force this year. In July 2019, population 15 years old and above stood at 73.13 million persons while in the same period a year ago this population was only recorded at 71.56 million of this population 45.38 million were in the labor force in july 2019 compared to 42.98 million a year ago in effect the labor participation rate for July 2019 was recorded at 62.1% compared to 60.1% in July 2018. Northern Mindanao or Region 10 had the highest labor force participation rate at 72.5% and the ARMM had the lowest labor force participation rate with 53.3%. Among the regions, Region 4A, Calabar Zone, had the lowest employment rate recorded at 92.8%, and Region 11, Davao Region, had the highest employment rate at 96.7% in July 2019. On the other hand, Region 4A, Calabar Zone, had the highest unemployment rate, recorded at 77.2%, while Region 11, Dabao, had the lowest unemployment rate at 3.3%. In terms of employed person in the three major industry sectors, all sectors posted increases in July 2019. Services sector hold the largest share of workers with 57.8%, followed by the agriculture sector with 23.5% of the workers and 18.7% uh, in the industry sector. The services sector includes the group of workers in wholesale, and retail trade, repair of motor vehicles and motorcycles, which comprise the largest group of workers registered an increase of 10.5%. In the industry or in agriculture, expansion in employment was recorded at 6.3% in the agriculture and fisheries. In the industry sector, Workers in the construction and manufacturing had combined share of 95.8% of the workers and this posted a growth rate of 2.2%. Wage and salary workers were estimated at 27.24% in July 2019 from 26 0.56% a year ago, and this recorded an increase of 2.6%. Those who were self-employed without any paid employee was placed at 11.75 million in July 2019, an increase of 10.3% from the estimate in July 2018. Employer in family operated farm or business declined by 21.3%, but the magnitude is relatively small that is, it has not made a dent in the overall employment level.
and paid family workers was about 2.7 percent, uh, 2.7 million in July 2019 from 1.9 million a year ago or a year-on-year -year growth of 45.3 percent. The number of workers in each of the major occupations posted uptrends in July 2019 from a year ago, except in craft and related trades and in the armed forces occupation. Workers in elementary occupations remain the largest group at 27.6% of the total employed persons in July 2019. The number was recorded at 26.7% in July 2018. Employed person by uh, gender, so we have here uh, more, uh, we have more uh, employed persons are more of males than females, each with a share of 61% and 39% respectively. Underemployment rate declined to 13.9% in July 2019 from 17.2% .2 in July 2018. Visible underemployment rate inch up to 8.6% uh, from 8.1% a year ago, while invisible underemployment rate dipped to 5.2% in July 2019 from 9.1% a year ago. For the full-time jobs, the next slide please. There was a decline in the percent share of full-time workers from 71.3% in July uh, 2019, uh, 2018 to 67.4% uh, this year. Similarly, the mean uh, hours work per week decreased to 41.6 hours uh, this uh, period, July 2019, from 43 hours a year ago. Moving on uh, to the youth employment statistics and those not in employment, education, and training, or NEET, uh, we have some figures here. The youth employment rate was relatively lower than the employment rate for the overall population 15 years and over. Uh, this was estimated at 85.6% in July 2019 from 85.9% a year ago. The growth in terms of the numbers, growth in youth employment increased by 4.0%. In July 2019, the number is 6.6 .6 million versus the figure in July 2018 at 6.3 million. Youth unemployment rate is, uh, was recorded at 14.4% in July 2019, while this was 14.1% in the same period a year ago. This rate would translate to about 1.11 million unemployed youth this year from 1.04 million in July 2018 or a 6.3% year-on-year growth. Unemployed youth had the biggest share of 45.5% in July 2019 from 44.7% in the same period in 2018. The youth labor force was placed at 7.67 million in July 2019 from 7.35 million a year ago. On the other hand, youth population 
for those uh, between 15 to 24 years old increased to about 20.05 million this year from about 19.98 million uh, estimate in July 2018. The labor force participation rate of the youth was posted at 38.3% in July 2019 from 36.8% last year. Youth unemployment or unemployed youth who are not in education and training increased by 6.9% from July 2018 to July 2019. So the youth who are not in the labor force and not currently schooling and in training declined by 17.6% during the period. Overall, uh, youth NEET declined by 11.8% from 4.2 million in July 2018 to 3.8 million in July 2019. The mean or average hours of work per week of the youth workers declined to 38.7 hours in July 2019 from 41.3. Uh, hours uh, last year. This ends my presentation on the uh, labor force uh, survey uh, for our uh, July 2019 round. Uh, before uh, we move to the question and answer, uh, we have some announcement here. We join all of you to participate in the upcoming 2020 Census of Population and Housing, a very important activity uh, for the country. Uh, spearheaded by the Philippine Statistics Authority. We will conduct the census this coming May 2020 and we hope that you will all welcome our enumerators. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Yusik Mama. So for this morning, we'll be distributing the press kits while before we start the question and answer portion. If you remind everyone, for uh, please wait to be acknowledged and please state your name and organization before asking your questions. So we are actually seeing a, a drop in the retail price uh, of rice. Sir, so still not the same. Hindi pa rin siya ganun kalaki yung drop compared to last year. Kasi di ba po ba high base? No, the, kasi, uh, of course, uh, last year we had a relatively high uh, retail price. But if you'll notice, the negative uh, inflation uh, started uh, four months back. So there is a there is really a uh, uh, continuing uh, drop in the actual price month on month because of the uh, because of the negative uh, inflation in the rice. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Next question, please. Sir, sa price pa rin. The, the 5.2, sir, na drop, is this the steepest since when? Uh, for for the year, uh, of course, uh, depending on your uh, period. But for the year, this is the fourth, and this is the largest uh, in terms of uh, negative uh, inflation. But in terms of milestone on a yearly basis, this uh, is the steepest. Well, of course, uh, we still have to see uh, in the coming months. Uh, but uh, within within the year, just talking of 2019, uh, this is the the largest drop in the price uh, for the component, the rice component in the consumer price index. Sir, clarification lang ulit on rice, sir. Kasi um, uh, as of, uh, the sec I think this is the second or third week of August, uh, regular milled rice uh, is at 38 pesos while well milled rice is at 42.71. So uh, these prices, sir, I think um, were seen just like, um, like, I don't know, February or March last year. So... This is uh, still on the high base, sir. Can, oh. uh, can you clarify that, sir? Well, ang uh, buti tingnan nyo kasi yung report natin dyan sa, sa ating weekly price, that's the average, ano? So, uh, if you will uh, if you will note, uh, across provinces, there are uh, varying uh, prices, no? So, uh, may mga probinsya tayo na may mga nasa 30 level na uh, ang lowest uh, price. So, when we compute kasi for the overall inflation, so we put in the weights by province. But of course, in that report, we just uh, uh, computed for the average. So I think it would be better uh, if you also look at scrutinize uh, the province and then the, the lowest, uh, highest price. Because uh, what we are seeing are actually averages from the different uh, the different outlets. So normally when we conduct survey, marami kami outlets. And uh, what is reported is the uh, average. And what you're getting is actually the national average. So uh, perhaps it would be good to uh, to also see the provincial averages and the lowest and the highest. Sir, do you have that figure? Yeah, we can we can provide those uh, figures for better analysis. Further questions? Sir, good morning. I'm Shariza from Philippine Star. I I'm Shariza from Philippine Star. So regarding the headline rate, do we see the downtrend continuing until the end of the year or are we expecting temporary uptick in the months leading up to the holiday well, uh, season? Yeah, as, I, as I mentioned uh, last time, uh, our expectation is that uh, it will most probably uh, uh, have a rate that is uh, around the vicinity of this uh, rate, uh, 1.7. So, so uh, it could go down. Uh, of course, uh, depending on the shocks, no? uh, it, it, uh, will, it can go up. But our uh, assessment is that uh, it will normalize at this level. And uh, sir, another one. To what, uh, to what can we attribute the slower growth in inflation in health and transport? Health and, uh, and transport. Ah, okay. The transport, uh, last, uh, there's a base effect. Because I think last year there was an increase in the fares uh, due to uh, higher uh, higher uh, fuel prices so there were adjustments in, in the jubilee fare so uh, the, the the base effect uh, plays uh, some role here but also of course the continuing uh, uh, drop in uh, fuel prices next please sir uh, Good morning, Paul. I'm Bruce Rodriguez from ABS CBN News. Uh, on the uh, employment figures, can we really ask questions as well? Uh, uh, un un uh, unemployment was steady, but underemployment we saw uh, somewhat uh, a good drop. Uh, in, uh, but uh, maybe in summary, or uh, where can we attribute this drop in underemployment? What are the maybe notable uh, changes <coughs> that we saw during that period compared to the previous one? Thank you. 
Well, first that uh, the the youth uh, underemployment uh, significantly uh, dropped, so that's one uh, in terms of the, the percent. No? Uh, and um, we have uh, uh, a drop of uh, eighteen percent. So right now our preliminary data shows that this this is one of the contributor to that uh, drop in the underemployment. Sorry, sir, it's youth and... Uh, youth uh, underemployment. Underemployment. Yeah. And, sir, yes. and sir, um, we've also been seeing, um, related to agriculture, the, the lower uh, palay prices, which may, I guess, uh, um, maybe force, force some farmers to again shift jobs again. Do, are we able to see some of these trends we, we during don't, that period? That are, we, we don't have, have that, that information period. yet. Uh, we, will, uh, we will look at the data. Uh, but in terms of uh, drop in the in the palay prices, uh, that one we're seeing. Uh, if you will notice, uh, we have a report on the weekly uh, price of uh, farm gate prices of palay, and uh, we have an updated uh, week three and week four. Although I suppose that this will be posted uh, in, in our website, but we are seeing already for uh, for some areas. Uh, in uh, Luzon, we have uh, seen uh, eight pesos for uh, wet uh, palay. So there is already an um, indication starting week three uh, for uh, low prices of eight. Th these are again, these are some uh, some of the areas that uh, that our field offices uh, visited. This is, uh, of course, in our report we we presented the average. But uh, we are we are seeing that in some areas the the low amount is uh, already uh, between eight to ten pesos. But in other areas, there's still higher prices. Regarding the low uh, low prices, is that only in Luzon or? Um, I'm uh, I'm looking the the report for week three and week four, and um, relatively uh, Luzon in particular, uh, we are seeing uh, uh, regions uh, two, wherein uh, we are getting uh, low numbers, uh, low end. No? Uh, I'll just give you the range from eight pesos to fourteen point fifty. This is for wet. But in other areas, uh, like for example in the Visayas, the uh, the prices uh, per kilo for uh, wet palay, as uh, uh, reported by our uh, field uh, offices staff, uh, would still range uh, during the third week from 14 pesos to uh, 18 pesos. So depending on the on the region, but the the lower end actually happened in uh, the zone provinces. questions? Alright, if there are no further questions, we would like to thank you all for attending this press briefing and we hope to see you all again in October. Thank you very much.